Look up at the night sky. What do you see? Stars, galaxies, infinite possibilities. For millennia, humanity has gazed upon the cosmos and dreamed of what could be. We are a species of explorers, innovators, dreamers. Our journey has taken us from the caves to the moon, and now we stand on the precipice of a new era. Think about your own body. It is a biological machine, a marvel of evolution. But like any machine, it wears down over time. We call this process aging. It seems inevitable, a fundamental law of life. But what if it isn't? What if aging is not a law, but a problem to be solved? Scientists are now viewing aging as a disease, a curable one. They are delving into our very cells, into the core genetic code that dictates our lifespan. They are discovering the mechanisms of decay, and more importantly, how to reverse them. The key lies in our DNA. Within our chromosomes are protective caps called telomeres. Every time a cell divides, these telomeres get shorter. When they become too short, the cell can no longer divide. It grows old. It dies. But researchers have found a way to lengthen them. By reprogramming the cellular machinery, they can trick older cells into behaving like young ones again. This isn't just about looking younger. It's about restoring youthful function to our entire bodies. Imagine reaching 100 with the body of a 30-year-old. Your heart strong, your mind sharp, your energy boundless. This technology could eliminate age-related diseases like Alzheimer's, heart disease, and arthritis. It would mean more time, more time to learn, to create, to explore, to spend with those you love. It would fundamentally change the human experience. A single lifetime could contain several careers, several families, several distinct chapters of existence. The societal implications are staggering. How would we structure our economies, our governments, our families? The science of age reversal is happening in laboratories today. The first generation to experience radically extended lifespan may already be alive. We are on the verge of conquering time itself. Your brain is the most complex object in the known universe. It contains a hundred billion neurons. It forms a hundred trillion connections. It is an electrical storm of thought, emotion, memory. For all of human history, this inner world has been completely private. A silent, locked universe within each of us. But that is about to change. Scientists are building bridges between the biological mind and the digital world. They are creating brain-computer interfaces, BCIs, devices that read electrical signals and translate them into commands. At first, a miracle for those with paralysis. A person unable to move could control a robotic arm, type on a screen, or speak through a synthesizer, just by thinking. It will restore freedom and communication. But this is only the beginning. As the tech becomes less invasive and more powerful, it'll reach everyone. A new form of input. Interact with the digital world as seamlessly as the physical. No more keyboards. No more touch screens. Just thought. Imagine composing an email by thinking the words. Imagine a surgeon guiding a microscopic robot with perfect precision using only their mind. Or an artist painting a digital masterpiece without lifting a brush. This is the promise of a direct neural link. But it's a two-way street. Interfaces will send information out and send it in. Download a new skill directly into your brain. Learn a new language in minutes. Master complex mathematics in an instant. A potential evolution of human intelligence. Connect our minds to the vast knowledge of the internet. Connect our minds to each other. A form of collective consciousness. A shared network of thought. The possibilities are limitless and a little frightening. Who controls the data? What separates authentic thought from downloaded one? BCI Tech forces deep questions about individuality, perhaps the most intimate and powerful technology we've ever conceived. Consider the computer you are using. It is incredibly powerful. It operates on a simple principle. It uses bits. A bit can be a one, a bit can be a zero, on, off. This binary system is the foundation of our entire digital world, but nature doesn't work this way. In the strange realm of quantum mechanics, particles can be in multiple states at once. They can be both a one and a zero simultaneously. This is called superposition. Scientists are harnessing this property to build a new kind of computer, a quantum computer. It doesn't use bits, it uses qubits. A qubit can be a one, a qubit can be a zero, or both at the same time. That makes processing power grow exponentially. Two qubits equals four values at once. Three qubits equals eight. A machine with just a few hundred entangled qubits 
could perform more calculations simultaneously than there are atoms in the observable universe. This isn't just a faster computer. It's a completely different way of computing, a machine that thinks like the universe. It operates on the fundamental laws of reality. What can you do with such power? Solve problems impossible for today's supercomputers. Design new medicines. Design new materials at the molecular level. Simulate every possible interaction to find the perfect solution. Create unbreakably secure encryption. Develop artificial intelligences with complexity that mirrors the human brain, leading to true artificial general intelligence. Unlock a new era of discovery in every scientific field. The development of quantum computing is a silent revolution. It's happening in heavily shielded labs, in temperatures colder than deep space, but its impact will be felt everywhere. It will be the engine behind many breakthroughs. Power simulations for age reversal. Process complex data from brain-computer interfaces. Design materials for colonizing other worlds. This is the master tool, the key that unlocks a thousand other doors to the future. Look at Earth, our pale blue dot. It is our cradle. It is our only home. But history has taught us a crucial lesson. Putting all your eggs in one basket is a dangerous game. An asteroid, a supervolcano, a self-inflicted catastrophe, our existence as a species is fragile. To ensure our long-term survival, we must become a multi-planetary species. We must venture out into the cosmos and build a second home. The most logical next step is the fourth planet from the sun, the red planet, Mars. Mars is a cold, desert world. Its atmosphere is thin, its surface is bombarded by radiation. It is not a welcoming place, but it has the raw materials we need. It has frozen water at its poles. It has frozen water beneath its soil. It has the necessary elements to create breathable air and rocket fuel. It has a 24 and a half hour day, remarkably similar to our own. With our ingenuity and technology, we can transform this hostile world into a new branch of human civilization. We can build pressurized habitats, grow food in underground farms, harness solar energy to power a new society. The journey itself is a monumental challenge, a six to nine month voyage through the vacuum of space but we are building the rockets to make it possible. Reusable, heavy lift vehicles that will make the trip affordable and routine. The first human footsteps on Mars are not a distant dream. They are likely to happen within the next decade or two. These first explorers will be the pioneers of a new age, establishing the first permanent human outpost on another world. They will be the beginning of a new story for humanity. Becoming a multi-planetary species will change us. It will force us to innovate at an incredible pace. It will give us a new perspective on our own world and our place in the universe. A Martian colony would be a backup for humanity, an insurance policy against extinction. But it would also be a symbol of our highest aspirations, a testament to our courage, a testament to our curiosity, a testament to our relentless drive to explore the unknown. We were not born to stay on one planet. The stars are calling to us, Mars is the first stop on our journey out into the great cosmic ocean. Look at the objects around you, your chair, your desk, your phone. They are static. They are fixed in their form and function. What if they weren't? What if you could command the very atoms of an object to rearrange themselves? What if your smartphone could morph into a teacup and then flatten into a plate? This is the concept of programmable matter, sometimes called claytronics. It is matter that can be programmed to change its physical properties, its shape, its density, its color, on demand. It is the ultimate form of three-dimensional printing. The building blocks of this technology are microscopic robots, called CADMs. Each one is a tiny computer, a fraction of a millimeter in size. They communicate and move, locking into place to form larger objects. A lump of millions of these CADMs would look like clay. Give it a command, and the units move reassembling into any shape, like a Star Trek replicator, but the object can change into something else moments later. Think of the implications. You would never need to buy new furniture. Your bed could transform into a desk in the morning, which could then become a dining table in the evening. A car crash would be a thing of the past. Vehicles flow and reform around an impact. Paramedics could carry a device that molds to a wound, sealing it instantly it would be the end of manufacturing as we know it. We wouldn't build things in factories anymore. We'd program them into existence, right where we need them. 
This tech blurs the line between hardware and software. The physical world would be as malleable as a digital file. We could create perfect, photorealistic duplicates. You could send a claytronic copy that looks, feels, and moves just like you, controlled remotely. It is a world of infinite possibilities. Programmable matter lets us shape reality with a simple command. We have peered into the future. We have seen a world where we can conquer age, merge our minds with machines, and compute with the power of the universe itself. We have envisioned a future where we walk on other worlds, matter itself bends to our will. These are not separate futures. They are threads weaving together the tapestry of our next great evolutionary leap. Each innovation accelerates the others, creating a feedback loop of unimaginable progress. A quantum computer will design the Kadams for programmable matter. A brain-computer interface will control them with a thought. This future is both exhilarating and terrifying. It is filled with godlike powers and profound ethical dilemmas. The same technology that extends life could create unimaginable inequality. The same interface that connects minds could destroy privacy and individuality. The same power that builds new worlds could be used to destroy our own. We, the people living today, are the guardians of this transition. The choices we make in the coming years will echo for millennia.